Welcome back to the custom garage build series. Today, we're gonna to be installing a heater out in the garage. It's um, January, I think I missed my point of um, getting it in before winter season, but that's okay. We haven't had that much cold weather. We're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna get started with installing this heater. This is a tempware heater that I purchased on Amazon. As you can see there in the box, a 7,500, they're calling it ER. I'm guessing that's um, BTUs, I'm not sure. Came with this nice little remote right here and some mounting screws, mounting hardware, and an instruction booklet. This bracket here is what it hangs from. I've gone ahead and mounted some Unistrut to the ceiling, incorporated it's so that that center bolt that you saw there will go ahead and go up into the unit strut and be able to let the units uh, swivel if I need to. This here is a combination of all the different three and four pin plugs that are out there today. It's, it's insane. You think you got everything you need and then you get back to the shop and you're putting it all together and you realize that it's not compatible and you know, two, three trips to the big box. All I can say is that go and get everything from one location at the same time. If you can talk to somebody in the electrical department, do so. It'll save you a lot of headaches. It's a um, stove plug, uh, range plug, they call it. It's a four pin. So that's two one tens, a common and a ground. This one I'm showing you here in the box right now uh, was one I ordered online, which is actually a number six wire which is way too heavy for this. I didn't catch that when I ordered it. It looked impressive. It had a nice sealed plug on the end. I thought I was good to go. Here laying on the floor, I've marked off my uh, wire chaser. That's what I'm gonna call it. I can't think of a, a legitimate name for it. And I marked it with tape. And what I had done is I stuck it up through the box. I punched out one of the punch outs and I stuck it up through the wall till it hit the top plate in the wall. That way I knew approximately how far I had to feed it up or down through the wall to make it come into the box. So here, I've gone ahead and um, we're going to take the bottom of the box off, or the heater, I'm sorry, and um, open it up. And it's pretty self-explanatory. There's two wire connectors inside there, and they're marked L1 and L2. That just means load one and load two. There's another screw for the ground. And that's with a green wire, you can't miss that. And next to that is another screw that would have accommodated the third wire, which would have been the white wire, which we're gonna call the common wire. And a lot of the codes, especially in Colorado where I was at, and I put the last one in, if you're gonna run a metal box, you had to have a common wire tied all the way through from the heater all the way back to the, the electrical panel. Uh, the reason being there was something to do with the metal box Possibly you could get a, sh a shock from it when you're plugging your unit in and out. I'm not quite sure completely what they were after on that. But when I got ready to wire this up and I fed the wires through, for whatever reason, I was getting ready to cut the two eyelets off of the two power leads, the red and black wire. I snipped the white wire as well. I didn't have another connector. So I went ahead and just folded it back and taped it off. And I'll tell you why that it didn't matter later on. A little bit uh, further into this video, I'll, I'll show you what happened with the box, with the metal box. Despite all my efforts to get a four inch metal box to put up into the wall, and I figured I'd find a stud and I would mount it right to the side of the stud. Well, the problem being is you're not gonna take a four inch box and put it through a two inch hole. It's not gonna happen. I wish I would have used a four inch and I probably might go back up there and change it out to a four inch eventually. It was awful tight in that box. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting the wires stripped and uh, you know, they're a pretty thick wire. So they're, I don't know if they make a cutter that will, I'm sure they do that will trim number six wires. So I just used my Milwaukee uh, regular wire strippers and I just went around them real carefully, uh, just enough to cut the insulator and then um, pull it off so I would have the bare wires exposed. This is when I made the boo-boo, I think. Yep, right there. Took that white one and said, snip, I don't need you. Bad idea. I did, I should have just hooked it up. 
it's like extra protection at this point. Not to say I can't go back and do it. I just got to get an eyelet, get back up in the, under the heater and put, put it to the, um, the other bolt that's in the bottom of the unit. So the other thing that I would say about this particular unit is it only allows you to bring the wires in from the right side, which obviously my wall outlet was on the left side. So I was hoping and praying that my wire was going to be long enough to go behind the machine and reach the wall and plug in. And it was. It would have been nice if they made uh, punch outs on each side of the cabinet. Um, so depending on where you were putting it and where your plug was going to be, you could go into either side of the unit and uh, wire it up. The wire I use through the wall, let me just talk about that. I bought number eight, three is what they call it. So what that means is there's three number eight size wires and a ground. So I got eight feet of it. Again, I didn't measure. I thought, eh, eight feet should be more than enough. And it was because I ended up putting the outlet in the wall because I didn't want to be going up in the attic and trying to drill through the plates and bringing it up through the plates and then cross the ceiling to put it in the ceiling above the heater. It didn't make sense to me to go through all that effort when I could just run it right up the cavity where all the other wiring was going, punch a hole, drop the wire down, beat it through the box, put the outlet in the wall, and that's what I did. After all this, we took it back down, we packaged it up, sent it back to Amazon, and we bought a 10,000 BTU, which there'll be some photographs at the end of what that unit looked like. And I went ahead and I started over, took this one down, took the wire out of it. Now this unit had punch outs on either side of the cabinet. So I was able to get the wire on the opposite side so it's not hanging under the heater, which um, I was real happy about that. Now right here, I'm stripping the insulation off the wire. And this is something you gotta be very careful about because you don't wanna go through the insulation and cut any of the wires uh, that are you know, insulation on the wires internally. If you do, that could be bad. That wire could heat up at some point and cause a short and maybe cause electrical fire. I don't know. I'm not a licensed electrician. I don't claim to be. None of the stuff that I'm showing you here right here is um, certified by any means by electrician because I'm not. Uh, it's just me as a do-it-yourselfer. So I was getting all the wires insulation trimmed off at the top because I got that wire locked in now. Another pointer here would be I ended up in the evening so I needed the light to do this. I wasn't going to work with a flashlight. So I left my power on. To be very, very safe, I would do it during the day. I would shut the main breaker off because you're dealing with a live panel here. If you stick your hand in the wrong place, you're going to get zapped. So I was just being very careful about how I strung these wires down through the, the ground bar there, far enough away from the breakers, got them down behind there. Because all the upper points of entry on the ground bar were already taken up by the rest of the stuff that's wired into the box. So obviously I, I didn't have a choice but to go down to the bottom to find an open slot. And you could actually double up in these slots too. I mean, that, that wouldn't have been... If for whatever reason I would have cut these wires too short, I would have definitely been doubling up on one of the ground uh, screws, terminals to make this work. It's better if you can run them by themselves than to do what I was just saying. But in a pinch, you could do that. So once I tie this into the breaker and turn it on, then we're ready to test out the heater. I have been running, I ran the heater yesterday because this is a little bit, a couple weeks week and a half down the road from when this heater got put in, the first one, and now I got the second one in. I have to say it's much better. It's heating it up pretty good. Doesn't hurt to have a rubber handled <clears throat> screwdriver when you're sticking it in that box too. I will tell you that. All your electricians carry pretty much um, round uh, plastic special screwdrivers that uh, if they happen to slip and touch something power-wise, you won't get electrocuted or shocked, however you want to look at it. You know, when you do things, you think all the time you got the best idea going in. If it's not something, you know, like last time I did one of these was three years ago. I really don't even remember 
what I did. I just know I put a heater in the garage and, you know, here I am, fast forward three years down the road, I'm doing it again. I didn't remember a lot of what I did. I basically was starting over with this whole idea. I knew how I mounted it, the unit strut, which worked out really good. And then when we put the new one up, I actually ended up, instead of just mounting it with one bolt in the middle so I could spin it if I needed to, I realized there's no real reason to turn it. It's on a 45 degree angle up there. That's about the best you're going to get, pushing it out into the middle of the room. So I went ahead and added two more bolts to it because this unit was so much heavier and I didn't want it you know, bending the bracket that it was supported on. I set the box up there and traced it. I knew where the stud was because I could follow it down from the panel. I measured off the sidewall over inches. I think it was, that's the second run. There's 16 inches on center, so it would have been 32 inches over. And I put something through the wall first to make sure I was offset of the stud, a two by four. And then I took and cut the hole. Now that piece of the Unistrut at the top, when I come down, you can see it up there. And the bracket's hanging on it. It's some um, three quarter inch Unistrut. Comes in silver galvanized or, yeah, galvanized and green. But I just take and spray them black that matches the, the black theme we've already got going in the garage. The bracket was black. And I anchored that to the joists on each end and then in the middle as I crossed a joist pattern in the ceiling there. So that's not going anywhere. It's tied right into the 2x12 rafters, ceiling joists. This is where I went up and hung the heater. The heater sits on um, four type, they're not wing nuts, but they're like a plastic threaded bolt that has a big like a knob on the end, that's what I was looking for. Um, so it's a bolt with a knob uh, molded into the end of it so that you can just grab them and twist them in. So what I did with the wire, I watched another YouTube guy that was feeding wire down through a wall and he had measured how long he needed the wire from the time it hit the box to go down to the ground bar and the common bar so that's what i did and it was i don't know 18 or 20 inches and then i tied my connector that's going to go through the hole at the top of the box which is actually behind the drywall you can't see it you just got to get the wire down through the hole and then once the wire made it through the hole i could pull it and center it up and get the connector to come through the box and then i could put the jam nut on it and lock the wire in at the box at the top of the fuse panel at the bottom. I was adjusting the louvers on the heater, pointing them down. At this point, I think I've, this one's actually showing it's all plugged in. You can, you can see the cords drooping underneath it, behind it, which is not what I wanted. I ended up buying that heater and not even taking into consideration that I have a 12 foot high ceiling in this garage. That 7500 would never heat that garage. So I'm going ahead and anchoring them into the breaker itself and I'm going back a few times and making sure wiggling it and making sure I got them as tight as I can get them so they don't work work their way loose. After this, we'll go ahead and snap that breaker in there and turn it on and go find that remote and get this thing fired up. Cross on my fingers. Okay, nothing arced. I think we're good. <laughs> so now we go find the remote. I'm going to get this ID organized and put chase some batteries. So, but here we're firing it up and let's see what we get. Kind of unique thing about this heater too is when you turn it on, it'll tell you immediately what the temperature is at the heater in the room. And then when you shut it off, it has another unique f feature. The fan stays running, but the uh, temperature starts going down one degree at a time till it gets down to a, a satisfied cooling, cool temperature. And then only then does it shut off the fan. There's also a program issue in there. You can program it to come on at a certain time and shut off at a certain time. You want it to come on an hour before you get home and you want the garage warm, you can set it for that. It's not Bluetooth, I wish it was, because then you could set it from anywhere. Yeah, it quit flashing, so I got the temperature I was playing around with going up and down with it. Pretty simple to operate. I did not like that cord hanging below it, though, around the back of it. So I'm kind of happy that we 
jumped up to the other one and got the cord issue straightened out. A lot of it's trial and error. Like I said, I'm not an electrician, but I'll give it I'll give it my all. I might not get it the first time, but I will make good on it the second. I like the unit. I think they did a great job on it compared to the one that I from. That's it. We're done. Okay, appreciate you watching the channel. Uh, today, I'm sorry I got drug out so far, but stay tuned for more. Hopefully, we'll have a, another video out here real soon on that wall and those uh, French cleats. Once again, thank you again for watching. Take care now.